from Zua Yurutz no, in Hollywood, it's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. I think that's outrageous. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Right down our telephone number. You got an 8 inch 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. It's like his 101, the ongoing on air results education course that teaches men how to get more tail for less money. We also teach women how men think. You're at 1 800 5 800 Tom. Let's say hello to Alex on Like His 101. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's going on? Uh, just doing a radio show here. Yeah, that's cool. By day, I am a shock jock. By night, I'm a crime fighter. That's cool. So listen, Tom, the reason I called today was because I wanted to uh, tell you about my ex-girlfriend. Yes. Well, I've been listening to Tom like now for a little over a year, two years, something like that. And until I'm just recently decided that I should take your advice seriously. Just recently? Just recently. Uh-huh. What made you uh, come to that conclusion? Uh, the Who's your coach? Was... Oh, wait, wait. Who's your coach over there? No, I got some buddies that just drove by and said hi Tell to them me. to shut up. Shut up, guys. You're on the air. All right. Right. The reason I broke up with her was because she was cheating, lying, and dishonest. Okay. All right. I was the guy who would spend and you more just, how long? Dollars. By the way, how long did you tolerate that, if I may ask? Pardon? How long did you tolerate that? Um. Well, until I found out it was, I found out it was legitimate. Not very long, just a couple of days. Okay. But I always had a feeling, a gut-wrenching feeling in my stomach uh, for a majority of the relationship. I just never did the investigative homework to find out if it was true. And, uh, you know, summer summer came around and all her friends came back uh, in town and started influencing her to do uh, bad things and go out and go to clubs just to get boned. And just like you were talking about earlier, and uh, I told her, listen, you can make the choice. You can go out with me, or you can go out and be with your friends, and if you lay with the dogs, you're going to get fleas. She took her friends. Did you get fleas? Uh, oh, yeah, she did. She's in the middle of it. She's did she the pass them on to you? Pardon? Did she pass the fleas on to you? Uh, no, I certainly hope not. So what did you do? I gave her the boot. You dumped that bitch. How did she react when you dumped her? Uh, she was a little shocked. I'm not going to lie. But I was shocked that she took the other side of the ultimatum. The other side of the ultimatum? Mm-hmm. Which is what? Which I told her. I said she could choose her friends or she could choose me. Her friends were bad influences on her, and I was trying to show that to her. Oh, I'm glad you dumped her. Thank you. But don't ever waste your time trying to explain that to anybody. Mm -hmm. Just be a man and say, I don't like your friends, and therefore, since you're not going to give up your friends, I'm out. Don't give her the choice. Be a man and make the choice yourself. Yeah. I mean, you. I'm sure you feel great dumping that bitch. You'd feel a lot better if you made the decision instead of her. Uh, it, in the beginning, it hurt, but now that the burden's been lifted off the shoulders a couple weeks later, I feel like a new man. Are you getting uh, more ass than a toilet seat? I'm sure he's not working on it. I'll take that as a no, but you should be working on it. I'm getting ass. You it's are getting more ass than a toilet seat. Oh, I see. That's a big statement. That's a big statement. But can you stop with the girlfriends? Yes. Do you really need a relationship? Not at the age of 21. Look how miserable it made you. 
I was awful. Well, you did that to yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, were you a lister back then? Uh, yeah, in fact, I was the uh, boyfriend who made my girlfriend listen to Like It, and she hated it. Of course she hated it. Now you know why she hated it. Of course. Now, were you a lister before you had a girlfriend? Um, periodically, not as uh, religious. Right, so you thought you knew more than the professor. Which is incorrect. Right. All right. So you're not looking to get married, I hope. No. And you're not looking to get into another relationship. God, no. No living with anyone. I'm not living with anyone. Okay. Good work, Alex. Thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM. Dan in Royal Oak, Michigan, listening to our online stream on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Professor. Hello, Dan. Yeah. All right, so let me give you the scenario. I DTB'd my girl a few weeks ago, and now the aftermath is me being single with three girls on the side. So everything is great, but I should be getting more ass in the toilet seat. But the problem is each of these girls, they don't really seem to be going anywhere. I seem to like be able to make out with them, fill them up a little bit, but everything kind of ends right there. Have you had more than three dates with any of them? Um, I've had two, two, and four. Four goes out the window. Really? Yep. Three dates, three strikes, you're out. Yeah, I was actually supposed to go to the zoo with her this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> with the zoo? Come on. You're not going to have sex at the zoo or after the zoo. That's true. You're not, remember one of the basic tenets of Lycus 101. Never let the light of day hit her face. That's true. That's true. You that's can't ever see her in, in the sunlight. Yeah, that's why usually when I hang out with them, they're just at my place and we're drinking. And I think if we're drinking everything, things are like progress pretty well, but they don't. So well, I'm just wondering what I'm doing wrong. You know? Well, first of all, uh, you've got to move it along faster, and not only that, you've got to be uh, very serious about that cutoff date. Right. Move yeah, them in, a, move them out. Yeah, there's actually uh, one of the girls I was supposed to meet up with her tonight for a third date, and uh, the cool thing about it, one of the things that's my advantage right now that I probably did right so far. Is uh, I was supposed to be there about 50 minutes ago, and she's already blowing up my phone with a bunch of text messages and everything, asking where I'm at, and I was just on waiting to talk to you, so I'm playing her off, and I may not even go over there tonight and see how that goes. Yeah, put her on ice. Uh, put her on ice. Where were you supposed to go with her tonight? Oh, uh, I was going over to her place. We are going to have some drinks and watch a movie. All right. So, I don't know, maybe I'll show up like two hours late. But you have to, and then you have to treat it like it's the last chance you have with her. Because right. it is. So yeah. I just have to like convey that strong message to her then, huh? Well, you certainly have to convey it to yourself first. Right. You're not going to let this slip through. Yeah. And if yeah. she, by the way, make your play for her, and if she resists you, it isn't happening. It's not going right. down. If there was chemistry between the two of you, it would be going down. Yeah, I, I think I think some of these girls. I mean, I think they're just like too shy. I don't know what it is. I think they're. Just but then too that, shy that means they're waiting for you to make the move. Yeah, and I, I go to make the move, and they kind of like push my hands away. Then it's or, time to go. Yeah, yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. If they it, look, you can't make chemistry happen. If there isn't any chemistry, don't humiliate yourself. Get out. Yeah, because shortly after I uh, dumped my last girl, I hooked up with this other girl and first date it was on there that's was no what i'm trying to tell you and what you tell these girls is this you say you know what since there's no chemistry between us it's been very nice knowing you and that's it done yeah. that's that's honest and truthful i mean don't do say things practice. like well i'll let you make the choice do you want to like that other guy you want to be with me or not you want to have sex with me or not no, no you I'll make the choice the their court. you I'll tell the you court tell like them that. there's no chemistry between us it's been very nice knowing you goodbye yeah, that's that sounds like a plan right there. You know how much better you feel when you tell them to get lost? My oh, boys great. my boys have heard me on the telephone. They've heard me. Oh. There there are particular chicks over the years that I have talked to and I have told them and the guys have heard me. They've heard me right. say things like, You flaked on me last time. That's it. I have no interest in being flaked on. Yeah. It's, Goodbye. It's as far as girls like this that I'm just hanging out with, I'm not like committed to them in any sort of way. 
if things don't happen after a certain time, I just stop returning their calls and their texts and everything, but I never actually come out and just told them what's right. up, you know? But, like, with my last girlfriend, when I dumped her, I mean, she was in tears and everything. She was, I mean, she was probably, uh, she probably a royal oak, uh, eight or nine. She was very good looking. Uh -huh. And, uh, she went on to cry and said no one's ever dumped her before. And just to be the first guy that dumped her, it felt great because I know that she's broken a lot of hearts in her day, you know? Yeah. Time for you to be the heartbreaker. No kidding. Because so, women are, you have to understand, as we have always said on, on, in this classroom, women are attention whores. Sure. They will do anything to get attention. They can't live without it, like a crack whore. They can't live without it. And, and so right. what you have to do is cut off the supply. Because she'll be happy to go out a hundred dates with you. That's right. I mean, think about that. Yeah, how, I mean, how many drinks? How many meals? How many movies are you gonna watch? How many zoo animals are you gonna see? Yeah, this girl that uh, I'm going over to see tonight. I actually had her here last night, and uh, I made her dinner and everything. We had wine. And I thought someone was gonna go down, and she just played the shy card again. So I think tonight's the cutout date. I mean, tonight's gonna it's be the first date. It's not the shy date. card. It's the I'm not gonna have sex with you card. Because yes, trust me, she's not a virgin. Right, right. She is not a virgin. Well, she's, I, I can't imagine her being a virgin because she went to uh, Michigan State. Well, and, right, well that uh, tells you everything you need to know. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So story. here's the thing. She, <laughs> she's not shy with guys she wants to have sex with. Right. She doesn't want to have sex with you. Yeah, but the thing is, she has to understand she has no choice. If there's no sex, there's no attention. Yeah, I probably yeah. won't come out and just tell her, are you probably having sex? And I'll probably just, like, lay it on thick, like, as the night progresses. And if she's rejecting it, then I'll just tell her there's no chemistry and walk out, you know? Yeah, just tell her. You know how great you're going to feel? No, Pretty no, good, right? don't go. No. Can't we be friends? No. <laughs> All right, Tom. Well, uh, I'm about an uh, hour and ten minutes late or so. I'm going to run over there and uh, see how things go. Give you an update. All right, Dan. All right, Tom, thanks. Blow me up. Good luck. Here you go. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Like It. Any guy out there who isn't single and is just kissing ass to his girlfriend right now needs to get with the program and DTB. It's Like It 101 on the Tom Like It Show. Tom Likas Show. Likas 101. I am your professor. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's May on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, May. I need your help. Okay. Well, I need a way to... Um to make my boyfriend, or um, I should say my ex-boyfriend, out of my house. Your ex-boyfriend lives in your house? Correct. Why did you let him move in? Well, he's he been living there for about two or three years, and um, we just fell out of love. And um, Oh, I know you don't like that word, but um, the relationship is over, and... Um, you know, and I want to move on to my life, and um, so... You, you want to get boned by other guys? Yeah. Right. Well, that, you of know course you I do. I need to tell you something, though. What's that? He's um, my, um, my first boyfriend and um, my only one. I mean, I... Uh, what I'm saying is, um, I only been with one guy, if you believe that. How long have you been with him? Twelve years. Twelve years? Correct. That's and I was a virgin before I met him. That says here you're 35? Correct. So you were a virgin till you were 23? Correct. Wow. Correct. You grew up in a very conservative family? I'm Chinese. Okay. That's usually a very conservative family. Correct. All right. And so you've had no other experiences with other guys? No, whatsoever. But you'd like to? Well, I'm sure, you know... Not right away, but I'm sure in a few years I am uh, would like to meet a guy, you know. 
Well, you know what? I'm not. I'm not looking forward to it. It's just whatever happened, happened. Okay. Now let me ask you this question, May. Do you live in an apartment or a house? It's a house. Do you and own I it? I own it. You? It's my. Oh boy. I know. All right. Uh, who pays for all the utilities? Me. Well, uh, you don't have to do that. Well, I know, I know. I've been listening to your show, and I know how you teach the guy, um, you know, to shut off everything. The thing is, I don't want to make him mad. Well, the other option you have, well, look, anything you do is going to make him mad if he doesn't want to leave. That's true. Anything you do is going to make him mad. What if you call an attorney and you get a uh, an eviction notice? Would that work? Well, it'll make him mad, too. I know. And it'll cost you more than turning off the utilities. Uh, and also, what I worry is um, he might damage the house, you know, punch a hole on the wall, things like that. Well, I understand. Well, then you might want to just uh, stick to uh, going to an attorney and finding out what your options are. Every state is different. I don't know what the laws are in Oregon, but the uh, laws are different in every state about uh, what your rights are. Okay. Uh, his name is not on the house, like it's no. not on the deed or anything like no. that, right? No. Good. So go to your attorney. Do you have an attorney? No. Do you have uh, family members who have an attorney? No. Really? No. Nobody in the family has an attorney for any reason? No, we did, don't. Did anyone in your family ever immigrate here? We all are. Well, then you must have had an immigration attorney. No, you don't need that. Well, you don't need one, but most people have one. You didn't have an attorney for no, that? No, no. And you never used an attorney for, like, a car accident or anything? No. All right. Do you have an accountant? No. Do you have a doctor? Actually, no. You don't have a doctor? No. How do you get birth control? I don't use one. You want to have a baby? No. Actually, I know you're going to ask me that. No, I don't. Really? No, I swear I don't want a baby. So you aren't and using yes, birth control. And I don't wear, I, and I don't take birth control, but I swear I don't want a kid. Was your boyfriend using a condom? Correct. A hundred percent of the time? Correct. Oh, boy. All right, well, then you're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. You're going to have to go interview a few attorneys. Okay, just go through the phone book. Well, obviously, if you've got no, if you don't know anyone who has an attorney, and you've never used an attorney, that's what you have to do. Oh, Okay. All right. I mean, the way people find attorneys is they talk to other professionals they do business with. Okay. That's the way you find an accountant also. I found my accountant by talking to my attorney. Okay. So if you don't uh, deal with any professionals of any kind, then you're going to have to do it that way. Do you have any friends? Yes. Do they have attorneys? I don't believe so. Well, don't be so sure, because uh, people use attorneys for all kinds of things. Everything from getting a divorce uh, to uh, uh, insurance claims, like if they have an accident. Okay. I mean, you might ask around and see if any of your friends have ever used an attorney. I'll bet some of them have. Okay. If they don't, then I guess I just have to go through the phone book. That's, that's what you have to do. Okay. And you will have to find an attorney who has experience with domestic issues like evicting a boyfriend. Yeah. So you have to ask that question. Yes. All right. Okay. That's the way to do it. Okay. And you have to find out what your rights are and what you what process you have to go through to evict him. And he's going to hate it. And by the way, he still might try to destroy your house. No matter what you do. But and I don't know. Knows, obviously, he knows where I live. You know, what if he come back and, and you know, I, I don't know what he will do. I, but, you know, he's a nice guy. But uh, So when I you mean, ask him to want... leave, when you ask him to leave, what does he say? He doesn't have a job. He said when he finds a job, he will move out. But he's been out of job for like six months, and I don't know... Um, and what, how long, how much longer will that take? What does he do for a living? He is, um, he, uh, what's, um, he put computer together. He assembles computers. Yeah, like the, um, the, like Intel. Okay, so he works in a factory? Um, I guess not 
exactly factual. Okay, what he does, he he told me he like tests after they put together. He I like tested if it works or not. I see. Yeah. And what do you do? I'm an office manager. Okay. And um, so you're the one making all the money, and you're paying all the bills. All right. Wow. Well, that's those are your choices. I think either way, you run the same risk of him uh, uh, damaging something. Uh, but you could make it really simple. You could start with, uh, I'm sure he uses the internet. You could shut that off. Yeah. You could start off with something like that. That isn't going to physically inconvenience him. It'll just be an inconvenience. Uh, you can tell him that, uh, you know, you're not paying the bill anymore. If he wants to get a job and get the internet installed, he can do that. And then if that doesn't work, uh, uh, you move on to the uh, course in uh, Portland. you got to have uh, hot water and you got to have heat. And uh, you also uh, want to be able to, do you have a gas stove, for example? Do you cook on a gas range? It's um, electric. Electric, okay. Well, so uh, you might, do you have gas at all for hot water or anything else? Yeah. Okay, you can turn that off. Well, yeah, but I live there too. I understand that. Oh. But if you needed hot water, you could always go to your parents' place or a relative or a sibling or somebody go to their place, take a shower. He can't. Okay. The, the, the trick is to make it as inconvenient for him as possible. You're not required to pay those bills. No. You're not? Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you want to do it uh, totally, uh, you I know. I want a piece peaceful way to, you know, to get it, you know, to have it done. Well, well, there's not, obviously, he is a lazy slug who doesn't want to do anything, and he want, he loves, he's got the perfect situation. There you are working and paying all the bills. He can sit home and do nothing. And by the way, what does he do all day at home? Play video games. Play video games. I was going to say that. <laughs> he plays what, Xbox? No, oh, a computer game. Oh, computer games. Yeah. And does he play those online? Yes. I'd turn off the internet tomorrow. You know, I don't even know if that is possible. Because of course it is. I, um, no, I live in, um, we have HOA, and that is including the cable. Oh, I see. Is the internet included? Correct. Okay, so you have a homeowner's association. Correct. And everything is included. Yeah, so I don't know if I can do that. Well... Of course, if you have any friends on the board, you could just uh, call them and ask them, tell them, you might, maybe you just be honest and say you've got this problem and you need to do something about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could also just take the keyboard of the computer and stick it in the trunk of your car. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. Well, again. That is stealing. <laughs> no, no, no. Is it his computer or yours? It's his. Oh, it's his. Yeah, it's his computer. Where did he get the money to buy a computer? Oh, he must have taken it as a company benefit go. when he was a... Yeah, okay. Well, no, you can't steal this computer, but you... No. You can certainly find ways to turn this stuff off, but if I were you, I would find an attorney. It shouldn't take you too long to find an attorney because this is not... This is not like getting a divorce. It's not as complicated. Okay. Find out what your rights are. I mean, can you change the locks? Some states you can, most states you can't, but you might find out if you could change the locks or if you have to give him notice, and then you're going to have to do that. Okay. I'll go through the yellow page. I think, I, I, again, you may have a friend who has an attorney. Okay. Yeah, you don't, don't assume that other people don't use attorneys, because people use attorneys all the time. Like, I did ask my sister and uh, my boss, and... They don't have one. <laughs> right. So, Do you have any friends? Yeah, I will ask my friends. Ask your friends. Okay. And by the way, the attorney they have may not be the right attorney for you, but that attorney can refer you to somebody. Okay. And you're much better off getting a reference. Once you describe what you need, if somebody can refer you, I've always found that's the best way to go. Okay. Okay? Okay, I'll do that. All right, call back and let me know how you make out. Okay, thank you. Thank you, May. Bye. Appreciate the call. Wow. Mm. Like is 101, 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. Shelly on the Tom Like is show. Hello. Hello. Yes. I love your show, but I have so much to say. First of all, you're giving your men the wrong message. 
Tell your men to be straightforward with their women. We don't all want a relationship. We all just want a little something, something at night. I am a single mother. Well, yes, darling, I mean. darling, single mothers are different from your average, young, nubile, 23, 24, 25 year old. Okay? They're different. No, no, no. We, we make mistakes. You like, you men make mistakes. Your men, the men are the ones that make us make those mistakes. No, no. No, darling. No, no, no. No, that's not, not. No, no. You're not going to scream over me, dear. You're not on this program. You're not. Uh, the men did not make you make the mistake. Uh, you could be on the pill. You could be on Norplant. You could be on Depo Provera. You could be using a cervical cap. You could be using uh, any number of other devices that are available to women to prevent pregnancy. You also have RU486 and you have the uh, morning after pill. And on top of that, with all of those fail, you have the right to get an abortion. And I would say anybody who doesn't like abortion shouldn't be having wanton sex with whoever's out there. They should wait until marriage. Uh, like if they have religious objections to abortion, for example, uh, they should not be out there fornicating with men. They should be waiting until they get married. So the bottom line here, darling, is that you could prevent it, and if you got pregnant by accident, you could terminate it. If you had a baby, it was your choice and yours alone, and it had nothing to do with any man you ever had sex with. Okay, may I speak now? Now you may speak because I just finished a sentence. Thank you. Okay, I've been there, I've done that. Okay, I probably make more money than you do. No, you don't. Okay. 50000 a year. Huh? 50000 a year. Darling, <laughs> I fart $50,000. Okay, well, anyhow, my point being, my point <laughs> being, women do make mistakes just like you men make, make mistakes. There's another fifty but, grand right there. Hey, no, here, here, here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Listen, listen, oh, listen, my listen. God. May, may I finish the sentence? Maybe may not. Maybe not. May I finish the sentence? You, you thought that you made, wait a minute, let me understand this. You thought at fifty thousand dollars a year you make more money than I do? Okay, well, okay, that was wrong. I apologize. I mean, darling, not even is. close. Oh, okay. there's another fifty thousand. Okay, okay, well, okay. I apologize for that. Hear me out. <laughs> Hear me out. Look at that. A lot of us women don't want you stinky ass men spend the night with us overnight. We don't want that. We. <laughs> It's 125k right there. Tom, Tom, can I speak? I, let you I don't speak. know. But darling, I, it's my show. Okay, so that's you very white of you. Woman. That was very white you of you to let Tom Likas speak on the Tom Likas show. Dolly, 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 don't don't be categorizing others as dumbasses. Uh, we'll be the judge of whether you're a dumbass. Okay, well, may I speak then without sound effects? Uh, maybe, maybe not. I'll, you know what? I'll decide whether you speak. Okay, not all of us want no, a, $40, women, a, a $40 meal. Because, because no, women, you know, you know why? Do you know why? Because women who are past their expiration date and already have squirted out a couple of crumb crunchers can't be as selective as young, supple 22-year-olds. Oh, you know what? No, no. Hear me out. Can I speak? Otherwise, you're you said male that already. You're, you're a male chauvinist page. Well, you whatever. Speak. You know what? I've been called worse names than that, Tony. Okay. You I'm know a what? total a hole. I, I, I I'm a bastard. Place. I'm a son have, of a bitch. I stayed on hold for over an hour. Uh, this will never stop being my show. You know what? You can stay on hold another half hour. I don't care. Well, if you're a gentleman, I'm not a gentleman. I'm a jerk. You are. Watch me. Another fifty grand. Take any crap from over the hill bitches like you. you know, go out, take your cougar ass out to you know the Foxfire or somewhere like that. Go out and get laid by some twenty-one year old. Go ahead. <laughs> they be the gilf that you are. That's right, I said gilf. 1-800-5800-TOM, that's our telephone number. Elaine, on the Tom Likas Show, hello. Hi, Tom. Hi, Elaine. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Long-time listener, first-time caller. That's 
that feedback is free. There's no charge for that. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm calling because I really want some advice from you. Okay. Okay, I really appreciate your show. I thank you because you teach me at, I'm 25, and you teach me what the real world is. And it's not pretty, but that's what it is. Right. So, yeah. Okay, I'm 25. I have two kids. That's, that's a problem right there. Yeah, that's, yeah. Why'd you do that? Uh, you know, I'm Hispanic and kind of runs in the show. Oh, but that I've learned explains. better. I've learned better. So you're just fertile is what you're saying. Uh, you could say that. Mm-hmm. Or horny, one of the two. Darling, you could be horny and use the birth control. Yes, I could have. Right. And but, that was but, wrong, and now I know that thanks to your show. So are you using you birth control now? Yes, I am. What kind right. are you using? I have actually had my tubes cut. So I can't really? Help. Well, did your mom go crazy when she found that out? I don't have a mom, Tom. Okay. How about your grandmother? I don't have a grandmother. Really? Okay. All right. So here you are, 25 years old. You got two kids, and you've been married how long? About five years. So you got so married. You got married. That at, would be the better word. You got married at 20. Yes. 20 years old, and then you had two kids. Yes. Okay. What's the problem? Shacked up would be the better word. I'm not married. Oh, you shacked up because you told Dean it was your husband. Well, how would I put that? Uh, he's your boyfriend. Okay. I know. I know. Hispanic women will generally call the guy the husband, even when he isn't the husband. Okay. Well, okay. So a husband he is, is my domestic married. partner. Right. Exactly. Okay. So he's my domestic partner. We've been together for such amount of time. Right. I'm going to be graduating as an RN in about one year and two months. Okay. All the time that we've been together, he's not worked. Not one day out of his life. I'm the one who has been working. I have Good. my So LPN. he had no job when you married him? He did. But once we had kids, he kind of didn't anymore. I see. And what did he do for a living? Nothing. No, when he had a job. Oh, uh, in sales. He was in sales. What was he selling? Uh, I don't want to discuss that. We don't need to know what, what, what drugs. We don't. We don't want to know what company he works for. Just what kind of product was he selling? Um, he was in a like transportation to like the disabled people, and he would sell those accounts too. Mm. Okay. So you had the first baby, and then he stopped working. Yes, he did. So let me ask you a question. A chronically unemployed boyfriend, why did you have a second kid with him? Good question. What's the answer? Uh, he had plenty of free time to nail you? Yeah. Uh, but but didn't you see that as a problem? No. You didn't see that as a red flag? I didn't listen to your show back then. So you thought that was totally normal to have a boyfriend... Oh, doesn't feel like going to work. Yes, I truly did. Mm -hmm. So you've got two kids, and you have to earn all the money. Yes. That's great. Isn't it? You picked them, dear. Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. Let me guess, he was your first boyfriend? Yes. Right. Yes, he was. All right. So you didn't know any better. And, of course, but because of that, it was the best sex you ever had. Yes. <laughs> it was the only sex you ever had. Yes. Right. Okay. I hear this story often. Okay. All right. So what happened? Well, uh, all these years later and with two kids and everything, he all of a sudden, well, I found this out through a friend, a friend of a friend. You know how that runs. Mm -hmm. Okay. A, a couple days ago, he decided to tell his friend that he didn't love me, that he was with me because of interest. Like I said, I'm going to be a registered nurse in about 12 months and two months, which is 14 months. Exactly. So he said he was with me only because of interest and that he didn't love me and that all this. I don't know if this is normal male guy talk or I don't know if this is how guys talk just to feel important. I don't know. 
Well, well does he home. act? Does he act that way around you? Sometimes. What do you mean sometimes? Sometimes he does. He's just really. I don't know. I don't know what to make of him. He's just really quiet all the time. He's a homebody. He doesn't go out. He takes care of the kids, and I'm the one going to school, and I'm the one working. Why do you so, tolerate that? I'm sorry? Why do you tolerate that? Why do I tolerate that? Yes, tell me the reason. That's why I'm calling. I no, want to no. know. I want, you to t I want you to make me tell myself what the reason is. Uh, well, clearly, I think you're in over your head. You don't know what to do. Okay. I mean, you haven't had another boyfriend. You've never been married. No. He's the only guy you've ever been with. Yeah. Yeah, you've never heard of anything like this. Now, you said you don't have a mom or, or a grandmother, so uh, who's your family? I have no family. I was in the foster system. Okay. And so what does being Hispanic have to do with it? I guess it's, our, it's from what I've learned. It's what it's our culture. It's what you're taught. It's what you grow up. But around. but you didn't grow up around that. You grew up in the foster system, which was with Hispanic people. I okay. mean, now I know better, which is probably you hear that a lot. I mean, I'm I wouldn't say fairly experienced, but I'm somewhat experienced, right. and, and I do have a, an associate's almost under my belt. So. But you don't have a, look, uh, you have a lot of education, you sound like a smart girl, but you don't have a mom to confide in, and you don't have sisters to confide in? Do you have any girlfriends? No, like I said, I haven't been anywhere since him. I haven't been anywhere. I've been working in school. So you have no what? friends, too? No, I have no one. No friends, no mom, no siblings? Nope. Wow. No wonder you're in this position. Well, dear, uh, clearly you don't know uh, what to do because you have nobody to rely on, nobody to talk to, nobody to compare notes with. But the situation you're in is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Okay. He's got to have a job. Okay. And if I were you, I wouldn't wait for him to dump you. I would take the offensive. And I would say, um, you have no choice. If you have no job... Me and the kids were out. And you'll be hearing from my lawyer. Okay. He says, because we've been together, he'll take me for half of what I've got, and I've got a lot for my... You're not married. Does that count? Well, uh, some people could file a palimony suit, but uh, come on. You're not married to him. And he, has to, he doesn't pay you a penny of child support. No. He doesn't spend any money uh, supporting the kids. When you leave with the kids, he's going to have to pay you child support. Okay. You uh, should see an attorney, as he I told the other legal girl. Status. How is he going to do that? What's that? He has no legal status. How is he going to do that? He's an illegal? Yes. Well, that solves your problem right there, darling. All you have to do is uh, tell him you're going to bust him with the INS. It's that simple. Jam. Like it is 1-800-5-800-866. Tom. I just think, you know, women, honestly, they like to beat around the bush a little more. You know, guys are more straightforward. Nothing I like more than that. The Tom Like It Show. <laughs> Likus 101 from Hollywood with Professor Tom Likus. Classes of session. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Now, Vincent, before you give us the update, uh, remind everybody about the conversation that you and I had. Oh, hey, what's up, Tom? Not much. Uh, so I called you about, I don't know, I'd say uh, three weeks ago. Yeah. And uh, I told you a story of an accident that I had with my girl, which was uh, a condom got stuck in her after I was having sex. Yeah. And so uh, we were worried that she was, uh, at least I was, you know, she you're, probably wasn't. Yeah, you're worried that she was pregnant. Yeah. And uh, so the next day she took a, the, the morning after pill, and I, st I still was worried, you know, because there's still chances. And um, about, a, actually, I called you over a month ago, because uh, obviously five weeks later she missed it. And I was worried as hell now, right? She missed her period. Yeah, well, she missed it by a week because she, she actually got it, you know? Yeah. 
So um, she missed it. I was worried that whole week, dude. Like, just worried. And I was, I, was, I didn't want to push her too much. And we took uh, maybe three, four pregnancy tests. And, uh, and they, were, they were all negative. And she was giving me all these BS excuses on why it's negative, blah, blah, blah. This, we could still be pregnant. We could still be pregnant and whatnot. So I was still chill about it, you know, be nice and, and whatnot so that just in case, you know, I can bust a Hail Mary. And so this weekend, she got it. And it was a light flow, so I was still kind of worried it was just like something out of the, the uh, something not normal. So uh, about Sunday was her fourth day on it. And... Uh, I had that. We, we were done having sex again. I, I just wanted to to be sure about it, and I had blood all over me, which is kind of sick. And uh, so then after that, I told her, I asked her, "So you are on your period?" And then she's all like, "Yeah, obviously, man. I've had it for four days now, and whatnot." And I told her, "Okay, so now I can dump your ass, right?" <laughs> 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 and then she's all like, "What?" And I was like, yeah, I can dump your ass now, right? Because you have your period. We're not, you're not pregnant. And uh, she started crying and whatnot, and I left. So were you under the impression that she was going to have a kid? I thought so for, for about a week. I mean, did I she was... say anything to you? Like, you know why? If I'm pregnant, I'm keeping Did she say anything? No, she didn't say she was going to keep it. She was just kind of, uh, kind of giving me the doubt, like trying to make me believe that, I, that, that she was. Oh, man. Cheech and Jong, tomorrow at 420 Pacific Time. That's right, I said 420. The Tom Likas Show.